How's everybody doing? This is Yanko Maceda, founder of Tabanero Cigars, where we believe in the enjoyment of craftsmanship that allows you to stop time, reflect on life, and plan the future ahead. I'm smoking a Toro Nero, Taba Nero. We always envision to have a Maduro cigar, so this is a San Andres Maduro cigar. How's everybody? Ed, how are you, my friend? Jonathan, Eric Rodriguez, Zach, how are you guys? How's everybody doing? Today we're going to go over a really common question that we get many times, how to start a cigar brand. I guess if you talk to Cigar International, they will tell you how to start a cigar brand at their scale. If you talk to a little guy like me in Ybor City, I will share my experience at my scale, how to start a cigar brand. For some good reason, a lot of our customers, people, they know who we are, our trajectory, they approach us with the same question. Hey, Yanko, do you mind sharing some time with us? and explaining how to start a cigar brand. And I've done it many times, and I don't mind keep sharing the experiences, the knowledge with you guys, but I say, you know what, let me do a Sunday Live that is gonna stay recorded on Facebook and also on YouTube. So every time we get that question, I go, listen, I'll send you a link of a video. If you can punish yourself for a whole 45 minutes and listen to that video, and you still want to start a cigar brand, you send me a text. So let's get started. Let's get started for those of you guys that would like to know how to start a cigar brand. David Capote, what's up, brother? How you doing? I miss you. Okay, I see many new cigars on Instagram, on Facebook, that is a good example how not to start a cigar brand. There's many of those. There's many of people that would like to experience the glamour experience, the recognizing of clients when you're doing a good job with cigars. But there's a fine line of just starting a brand or doing a good job with a cigar brand. So when, and I'm gonna go with the different scenarios that I've been uh, bump into it with the with question about cigar brand. Uh, many people want to start something mobile. Want to start something mobile. Yeah, I would like to have my brand and start mobile, doing an event, going out there. But I need to have my cigars. I need to acquire cigars, cigar bands, make, make a product, a unique product, so I can start pushing my brand. Okay. Some other people that want to start their brand to later on open their shop open their cigar shop and already have their brand. Start doing some social media uh, before the brand, acquire the brand, and then start their brand. So all these people that come here and ask me how to start the brand, first question, first question I ask is, do you have cigar band? Do you have a cigar band? Oh, no, no, I don't have a cigar band. First, I want to know how much is it that I got to put into it to start the brand. I said, well, that makes a lot of sense. Let's get into that. How much you should have to start a cigar brand. Again, if you have a bar and you sell wine and beer, full liquor, and you just want a cigar for your customers to light up, enjoy a drink, and talk about it and laugh, that's easy. You can have Someone designed 24 labels on a sheet of paper, a glossy sheet of paper, go to Kinko's, print 50 pages, have one of your employees to slice it, slice it, slice it, and put a flat label on your cigar, and you have a brand for your bar. The question is, well, where can I get the cigars? Simple, simple. Look for bundle cigars, bundle cigars, those 25 cigars that you can buy for $50, $60, Look for a decent one. Look for some that has a lot of quality, but it hasn't been discovered. People don't know yet that that bundle cigar has such a quality. Hoping that you have some palate to really figure out if a bundle cigar is good, 
You can start with bundle cigars, but placing your labels on a bundle cigar and start your own little brand. It is illegal. It is illegal to do it, but if you want to start with everything like it's supposed to, you need at least $100,000. Now, if you just want to start simple, you can buy some good bundle cigars, have your friend to design a label, put it in the cigar, and then start giving the cigars away, go to events, and I think that will be a decent start and let it grow little by little because I didn't buy bundle cigars in the beginning. I didn't do it like that, but it was a similar start. I had cigar rollers making cigars. I, will, I had my commercial designer to design some labels, and there's a difference between a commercial designer and an artistic designer. There's two different things. So I started like that. Go to Kinko's, print the labels, cut it myself with a slicer. You can put three sheets at a time and then glue it around with a school glue. That is school glue on the, on the little tube, that is fine. That's not gonna be, that's not gonna affect anybody if they have the glue on their mouths. It's safe for kids, it's safe for your lips. So that's how you start something simple, okay? Now, the question, how you start a brand like Tabanero Cigars? Let's get into it. I get many people, they come in here and they say, no, I know how to design. I know how to design. I'm pretty good designing. I'm pretty good drawing. Good for you. Good for you. You can do some drawings at your spare time and look at them and share with your friends. That's good. I know people in the industry, they, they design their own labels. I'm not sure it's a label for cigars or for pesticides or, or food growing chemicals. I'm not sure if he got confused and did something for cigars or uh, agriculture uh, product. But he says he's a designer. Okay, you sit down, you do your beautiful label, you do your logo, your colors, awesome. Go ahead and send it to the print shop that makes the labels and tell them, look, I already designed my label. Go ahead and make me labels. They'll go, well, it looks beautiful on paper, but you need to send me the different layers, different setup, which die cut will you like on your label, which embossing plate you will like on your label. And you're gonna go, wow, what is that? Well, <laughs> those are the parts to make a successful cigar band. That's why a commercial designer is pretty good making you a business card, making you a flyer, but he has no clue how to put together a cigar band. You're going to bump into a friend that he's probably has some cumin on his blood and he's going to say, yeah, yeah, I can do that. That's so easy. I'll charge you $500. I'll charge you $800. You end up paying four or five guys like that to get somewhere, to get somewhere. If you really want to translate that drawing that you did because you're a good drawing person or artistic, you need to find an artistic designer that will get your drawing and put it into a cigar band format. Cigar bands have metallic inks, metallic foils, gold, silver on foil. So you need to learn how to combine metallic inks and foil to bring that cigar label to another level. You need to figure it out which colors go with your brand. You need to learn that red is a sign of stop. That's why red lies means you stop. I see people that put so much red on their labels, and when human beings looking at those labels, unconscious, they go away because it has too much red. So there's so much into designing a label, and you thought your friend can help you out with $800. Raymond, hermano, un saludo. Un saludo a Raymond Pages. Raymond Pages is going to be part of this, um, this live on how to start your cigar brand. Raymond, estoy hablando hoy por muchas preguntas que me hacen cómo es que se empieza una línea de tabaco, cómo es que se empieza una marca de tabaco. Y sin dar mucho detalle, porque se demoraría demasiado esto, estoy explicando a las personas cómo empezar y estamos hablando todavía en el proceso del anillo. And my beautiful Toro Nero went off because I'm sharing with you guys my knowledge, my experiences. I don't have a lot of knowledge. I got so much to learn. I'm just sharing my experiences. 
So a decent uh, cigar band designer is going to charge you $2,500. $2,500 to design your label or get your sketch and put them in a label. Listen, $2,500 to $5,000 is the price of an artistic designer. Don't fool yourself. I already went that route. And don't fool yourself. You want quality cigar bands like I have, like some other brands like Camacho, like Oliva, like uh, La Palina. La Palina spent $50,000 on their label, warranty seal, and Vista. Let's take a quick break so I can have my Taba brew for me and you. Aquí, amor, ponlo aquí. Ponlo aquí. Gracias. Taba brew for me and you is roasted right here in Tampa, Florida by the family Naviera Coffee Mill. They've been in Tampa 106 years. So don't fool yourself. Anybody that is doing a decent job uh, designing a label or transferring your sketch, bringing it to life to a cigar band, you'll be paying $2,500 to $5,000. Now, remember, that is only, that is only design. Margarita Valdivia, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo están quedando esos puros allá en Nicaragua? Saludos. So, on design, you're already at $2,500, and he's just going to design one band, one band, one Vista, which is the inside of the box. In the beginning of the live, you saw my Nero box that has a nice back. That is that is called a Vista. So the design of the Vista cigar band and the warranty seal, you're talking about $2,500 to $5,000, depending on how reputable the cigar band designer is. When you talk to an entire agency to design your brand, now you're talking about the fifties, the sixty thousand dollars to design your brand. So I'm talking about just talking talking to a freelancer, a one individual that will design your band Vista and Warranty Seal. So okay, you taking notes? You taking notes? Designing the band twenty five hundred to five thousand dollars. Now you have a design. Now you're gonna take a risk that everything that you guys put together, it looks beautiful digital. It looks beautiful digital, but now you're gonna to go to the print shop. There's um, a few, a few print shops. There's one in Florida, one in Miami, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua. You have to find which one will suit your, your needs better. So now when you go to the print shop, they go, okay, beautiful. You got a label, you got the die cut, and the die cut is basically the silhouette, you know, the, the how you want to do your label. If they already have, if you design with one of their die cut, you will save $350 on that die cut. If you want to do your own shape, that's $350 for the die cut right here in the U.S. If you do it in Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, they're $700. I don't know why more expensive. That you have to figure out why. Um, that's the die cut. Now you need an embossing plate because I figured that if you want to feel something on your label, you want some embossing. You don't want an entire flat label. The embossing plate is another three fifty. If you do it in Dominican Republic or Nicaragua, it's another seven hundred dollars. Uh, setting up the colors, I think, is seventy to hundred dollars to start printing. And they do minimum 5,000 labels. That's the minimum. Now, when you do the minimum of 5,000 labels, your label is going to come out around 14, 15 cents per label. Opposite to do 100,000 labels that you will play, you probably, probably pay two cents, two cents per label. So that's something to take into consideration. So doing a minimum, doing a minimum of the cigar band and your design, you're already talking about eight thousand five hundred dollars eight thousand five hundred dollars to ten thousand dollars depending how much foil uh, ink you want to put in the labels are you taking notes 
So starting your own, your own cigar brand on designs and labels, you are already almost at $10,000. $8,500. So basically, 5,000 band, die cut, and busting plate. It's about $8,500. And you pay, and you pay for Angel. Thank you, thank you, Angel. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. We really, we really enjoy the process. We have fallen in love. We have fallen in love with the process of making fine cigars. It has nothing to do with getting lucky. It has to do with a strong desire and looking, always looking for the right person to bring things to a next level. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Angel. So now let's talk about acquiring the cigars. Uh, if you have a middleman, if you have a broker that is being importing cigars, and that person doesn't really put you in touch with the factory, you will pay broker prices. So basically, whatever the factor is charging, plus another, I don't know, 10 cents, 20 cents. If you want to have that peace of mind because you build a relation with a broker that is right here in the U.S. and you don't mind paying those another 20 cents, uh, 15 to 20 cents, you're okay. That will give you peace of mind that you're dealing with someone in the U.S. Now, when you go down to Dominican Republic or Nicaragua, because if you're really serious about starting your own brand, first of all, for anybody to pay attention to you down in Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, you need to show some brands. You need to show some packaging. You need to show that you're really serious about it. You get down there. I'm already giving you the numbers. I'm, I'm pretty close with the numbers that I'm giving you. You, go, you get down there and you tell someone that you want to do this, you want to do that, but you don't have a website you don't have social media yet. You don't have packaging. I don't think they're going to be paying attention too much to what you are asking for. And I totally forgot to please hit like. Hit like. I think it's... <laughs> I got to get into the habit of asking for likes. And also, please, when you go to Instagram, check the, check the, the post that we did on the new Nero's. Check the new Nero post. If you like it, hit like, hit like. So some other people see our new, new Maduro, or new Maduro, which is the one that I'm smoking right now. And I will talk a little bit about the cigar uh, during, during the session that we are talking about how to start your cigar brand. So again, big risk. Anything in life that you want to achieve, that you desire, you need to take big risk. It sounds crazy, but you already in it ten thousand dollars just on labels. Just on labels, you already in ten thousand dollars, and you have some labels in your hand. So when you go to a manufacturing to go look, these are my labels. This is um. This is what I um, I'm intending to do my brand with. Okay, when you get down there, everybody's gonna tell you that they get they make the best cigars. Now it's up to you. It's up to your palate. It's up to them. When you start trying cigars, what will fulfill what will fulfill your palate? What will what will really satisfy your palate? And think about customer, think about clientele how you believe that your brand is going to also fulfill their palate. There are some cigars that I'm not, my taste is not acquired to those cigars because they're too strong, because they had a lot of the Dominican earthy taste. And for me, they're not, they're not my type, but they're, much, they're some of my, plenty of my customers here, that they love that earthy taste. So I just can't design cigars just for me. I have to kind of learn I learn, uh, get to know my clientele. What is it that my clientele is expecting from me? So down there, Dominican Republic, 
Charlene, how are you? Hey, I'm good. <laughs> They're here. <laughs> awesome cigars. <laughs> so, um, down in Nicaragua, in Dominican Republic, you have to take this in consideration. Right now, the most popular tobaccos in the industry are Nicaraguan tobaccos. No doubt. The most popular tobaccos right now are from Nicaragua. Nicaragua have discovered many regions to grow tobacco that Cuba doesn't have it, Honduras doesn't have it, Costa Rica doesn't have it, and Dominican Republic doesn't have it. So anybody manufacturing cigars in Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Honduras, Cuba, they would love to have, and they try as much as they can, to have Nicaraguan tobacco. Who do you think will have first access to good Nicaraguan tobacco? People in Dominican Republic or people in Nicaragua? You have to take in consideration that Dominican Republic, a cigar roller, gets paid about $100, $120 a week. Nicaraguan cigar rollers, they can pay $30 a week. So there's already a big difference between labor when you are deciding where you're going to make your cigars. Craftsmanship and also labor. Angel, no doubt, no doubt. Jalapa and Esteli are producing amazing leaves, but also Condega, Umetepe. Umetepe is such a, uh, a strength tobacco, pretty similar to Esteli, but really sweet. It's something new that I discovered, and you'd be amazed with some Umetepe when you're trying to do a medium to full, a full body cigar. It will be a really strong cigar, but pretty sweet, kind of similar to what Cuba used to be. So now you got to make your decisions where to start, Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Costa Rica. So it's up to you. It's up to you based on your relationship, your friends, if you want to go to Dominican Republic, if you've been in vacation to Costa Rica and you want to visit some of the factories in Costa Rica or you want to go to Nicaragua or Honduras. It's up to you. For me, it will make a lot more sense to go to Nicaragua. And it's basically what I did. And I've been to the Dominican Republic many times. Uh, you have to understand that you have to develop some psychological, so when you're talking to people in business, to really see if they're transparent, if you feel the energy that they really want to do healthy business with you, or it's only a one-stop shop that making you 40,000 cigars and don't, don't see you again. Okay, so... We talked about looking for the cigar factory. Let's talk about now. Choosing the cigar factory. You bump into someone that has four pairs. Four pairs, four cigar rollers. He's really small. And you ask him, hey, how long you been making cigars? And he says, well, I've been doing it 10 years. Someone making cigars for 10 years and he still has four rollers and in a country that all you do is manufacturing because if you say here in the US and it's like this a cigar shop that does many things and we got one two three rollers that is part of the cigar shop I'm not really into the manufacturing business for other people but if you go to another country and someone says four rollers and he's been in the in the industry five years ten years What's going on? Now, if you bump into someone that has four rollers and he just started a year ago, well, it's up to you if you want to take the risk to grow with him. To grow with him. So you're not to, you need to think of all these things. If you have a friend that knows Oliva Cigars, that knows Ager Fernandez, and they put you in touch with such a big company, and they agree to make your cigars, Whatever order you're going to place is going to disappear among that many cigars that they're manufacturing. You have to take that in consideration. Your cigars will disappear in such a big production. Do you want someone a smaller or smaller scale that you can grow with him, that it will pay more attention, that it will make sure that you, your cigars are top notch because it will help you to grow and it help him to grow. So that's another thing to take in consideration someone with 20 pairs, someone 
Well, someone, even with four pairs, five pairs of cigar roller, but he's riding his beginning. You need to take the risk. If you see the craftsmanship, if you see that he has beautiful cigars, but in your mind, you're going, well, but he's really new. Well, you're new too. You're new too. So if he allows you to take that risk with him, right away, you can be surprised when someone young is entrepreneurship to start making his own cigar. That will, that will be a good person to start your brand. Big, big manufacturing, first of all, you're not going to you're not gonna be able to do less than 100,000 cigars. 100,000 cigars. If you go to big manufacturing, they want you to do at least 100,000 cigars, uh, $350, $3 and 350 3 to 350 per cigar. $3 to 350 per cigars and 100,000 cigars. That's 350,000 cigars. $350,000. That's that's one example. But let's talk to the to the smaller uh, the smaller idea when people approach me. <clears throat> Again, if you're thinking about <laughs> Yes, Angel, Sacapa XO, that's the one that I'm drinking. That's the one that Raymond Pages it was introduced me to, Sacapa's XO. What a rum, what a rum to enjoy with sun-grown, sun-grown cigars, sun-grown wrapper cigars. So, okay, uh, we were at the amount of cigars. We already talked about the size, the size of the factory, what size of factory it will it will be good for someone that is right in the beginning. Even if you go to someone as small, with four pairs, 10 pairs, 20 pairs, for him to pay attention to your brand, you need to be at least, at least at 50,000 cigars, 30 to 50,000 cigars. When you approach this person, you show your labels, you show your vista, you need to tell them, to really for them to pay attention that you're intending to do 30 to 50,000 cigars on different sizes. 30 to 50,000 cigars between $2.50 to 350 depending the size of the cigar. So 50,000 cigars between 100,000 to 200,000 depending on the size of the cigar. You need to choose at least three sizes. The most, the most, the best seller, Robusto Toro, and something else, Torpedo Churchill. So you already uh, $8,500? $8,500 for 50000 And $8,500 if you were just making the first run of 5,000 labels. And you do 5,000 labels to actually see the label on your hands, to feel the labels, and see if you're already 100% uh, satisfied with your cigar band, your cigar label. And you even can package your first 5,000 cigars with those labels to see the client's uh, opinion, to see how they feel about the label. But remember, you're making 50,000 cigars, so you need another, <laughs> another 45,000 labels to be able to package everything. So you see how much money is into making a cigar brand? You see how much money is into it? Remember, uh, I spoke in the beginning that yes, you can do it an easier way by buying bundle cigars and just taking out of the cellophane and putting your label print and kinkos. You can do that. So to do it right, my friends, we're talking about we're talking about a hundred, a hundred and twenty thousand, a hundred and twenty thousand dollars around there, around there. If you cut corners, it will be pretty difficult to succeed. Some people says that the only way to become a millionaire in the cigar industry is if you come into the industry as a billionaire. So you lose a lot of money and you become a millionaire. And I understand why they say that because the cigar industry is a really passionate industry. If you get into it because of the money. You will go through a lot of pain and lose a lot of money. So if you are new into it, if you haven't developed a palate for cigars, be careful. Be careful. If you've been already in this lifestyle five years and you respect your own palate, your friends respect your palate, well, go ahead. Go ahead and give it a try. 
it's not guaranteed. <laughs> We've been in it 10 years and it's still not guaranteed. So guys, um, when someone asks you about this, if you feel it was good content, share the video. It's gonna be on Facebook, it's gonna be on it's gonna be on YouTube. Share the video. When anybody asks, oh so you have any idea how to start a cigar brand, share this video. We went through most of the stuff to start a cigar brand. And when you really serious about it and you want to start making the boxes, whew, that's another that's another 20 minutes talking about boxes. There's many a small companies that makes boxes in Miami, but they're rather to do the counterfeit boxes for Cohibas. Those Cohibas that your friend give you, and they said, no, this is this is for real. You know, this is a friend of mine that his grandma come from Cuba, and she brings it from Cuba. Those are counterfeiter Cohibas from Miami. They make it. They bring the cigar from Nicaragua, and they make the boxes in Miami, and they sell those boxes for fifteen dollars. Do you think a cigar box maker in Miami would like to do your boxes for eight dollars, ten dollars, when he can sell counterfeit Cohibas for fifteen? You go down to Nicaragua to do cigar boxes. Don't they're not going to make you twenty cigar boxes? The minimum is five hundred boxes, five hundred boxes per size. So if you're doing three sizes, you need fifteen hundred boxes. If someone is reputable, respectable. So 1,500 boxes down in Nicaragua, they're, they're $7.50 per box. That's without importation taxes when they come in here. <laughs> I'm not scaring you, I'm just telling you how it is. I'm just telling you how it is. Uh, if, you, if you got a lot of money, deep pockets, please welcome. Welcome, I can help you out achieving your goal. I can help you achieving your goals because I will manufacture your cigar with the same quality and taste and profiles that you thank you that you find right here in Tabanero. I can help you out, but you gotta bring some money. You gotta bring some money. You gotta bring some money to succeed. Don't blind yourself. If you 16 years old and you want to spend the next. 30 years in the industry to succeed, yeah, you can start with $5,000. You can print the labels at Kinko's, you can cut it yourself, you can buy bundle cigars that you believe that they're good cigars, apply the label and start pushing a cigar that you believe in and hopefully get lucky and find who's the manufacturing and talk to the manufacturing directly and say, hey, look, I tried your bundle cigars, they're amazing. Can you do a little bit more quality so I can start my brand? That's another way to do it. Now, it's gonna take a long time because first you gotta convince all your customers with bundle cigars, with a label from Kinko's, and then little by little bring it to another level. And boxes, again, boxes are really difficult. They're so difficult that I had to start my own uh, cigar box in here in the US. And man, a lot of my white hair is being because of cigar rollers, and also trying to get this done right and get it going. These are made right here in the U.S. and I think they're around ten dollars. I think. Hopefully, when we take the box shop to Nicaragua, they probably go down to five dollars, even cheaper than the other manufacturers in Nicaragua, because it's all laser. It's all laser. There's nobody cutting by hand. All right, guys. I think we went over. Do you think we explained everything about starting your own brand? No, not yet, not yet. Not everything. <laughs> That's part one. Because, again, if someone gets your cigar in their hands and they want to know a little bit more about you, you need to have some social media. If they really want to read more about the product, you need to have a website. And I'm not gonna tell you how much is a website because if you're an entrepreneur, you probably have an idea how much is a website. 
uh, you know, a website, you can do a website on, on uh, Fiverr for $300 in India. You have to learn pretty good communication skills to accomplish that website in India. You also can do a website right here in the U.S. between uh, $1,500 to $4,000, depending how good of a website you want to do. So, again, website, social medias, you can hmm? email, email campaigns. You need to start collecting emails, send emails to your prospect, people that are interesting on your brand. So, it's a lot of work. If you really, if you're really thinking about it because of the money, I encourage you to leave that idea behind. Do not get into cigars because of money. You will fail miserable. You will fail miserable. If you're getting into this industry because of money, you will fail miserable. So guys, it's a, it's a really complicated process that I think it will work for really passionate people. Really passionate people that will not give up because of the many obstacles that you're going to bump into the cigar industry. Forget about FDA. They keep scaring us about FDA, FDA. Forget about FDA and go through with it. FDA, supposedly someday it will regulate the industry. I'm not going to wait for that. I will continue doing new brands, uh, new sizes, and forget about FDA. I can't live in fears for the rest of my life when it comes to FDA. There's some stores in here in Ebor they still have, don't have a cigar ban because they're still waiting to see what's going to be the outcome with FDA. I can't live in fears like that for the rest of my life. No, no need. I told my wife, I told my son, uh, don't you guys think on the back of my head that because of the situation that we have right now in the U.S., that we don't really see a future. Every once in a while, something comes through my mind. When I was a kid, when I was six years old, uh, seven years old, nine, I remember walking through corners, businesses in Cuba, and a um, a barber shop, a barber shop, a hotel. And I used to see the nice, uh, you know, sign, already pretty old, no? And I would ask my grandma, oh, wow, grandma, uh, who owns that? It, well, I was owned by so-and-so, but they left to the U.S., so now the government is taking care of that business. Oh, that used to be a bakery, but the owners left to the U.S. So everybody left to the U.S. Everybody left to the U.S. and left the businesses to the government, to the government. And I tell my son, those people, they're not really... <laughs> gracias, aquí, gracias, hermano. But, um, but everybody, through history later on and growing up, I realized that nobody left because they wanted to leave. A lot of people left in Cuba because the government came in and said, you know what, now we are a socialist system. Now all the businesses are for everybody, for the people, for, for the country. So you can work for the business. You can stay here and work for your own business. But now the government owns the business. Call me crazy about how things are going every once in a while. Every once in a while. Yes, Ed, those rooms are here. <laughs> every once in a while it goes through my mind. It goes through my mind, you know, how the situation is going. Any crazy government that would like to nationalize business in the U.S., I know it will be a civil war, but <laughs> it's fears on the back of my head that some crazy day I can lose, I can lose my business because some crazy idea, a crazy socialist idea. Now, do that's going to make me stop? Do that's going to make me stop to keep going forward? No, I'll keep going forward. I'll keep going forward. I have many fears from Cuba, but the way I am confront them is by taking action. Okay, taking action to keep going, keep going. Uh, we bring... <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Ken. Ken was telling me that I chose to eliminate 99% of the people that were trying to get into the cigar business. Listen, Ken, I'm just being honest. There's a lot of dreamers. I'm a dreamer, but I'm sharing, I'm sharing, I'm sharing my, my experiences, my pain, 
trying to save you some pain. If you really want to get into the cigar industry, you need at least $100,000 if you want to do it right. If you want to do it right, $100,000 or 30 years of your life. You tell me, $100,000 or 30 years of your life. You tell me what, which way you want to go. That's how it works. There's a lot of retired people, they want to get into it. And I go, do you have 30 years of your life to put into this? No, no, I'm already retired. Do you have $100,000 to put into this? No, 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 I can't. I can put all my savings into cigars. Well, keep enjoying your retirement. <laughs> keep enjoying your retirement, smoking cigars, and stay out of trouble. <laughs> For crazy entrepreneurs like me, like Raymond, like Yankiel, we will never retire. We will never retire because we love what we do. All right, guys, I think I, I share enough. Again, if anybody asks you about how to start a cigar brand, tell them, hey, I know a crazy Cuban in Tampa that he has a good video <laughs> so you can enjoy and, uh, and learn how to start a, um, a cigar brand. If you go through the whole pain of listening to me for 45 minutes and you still want to be in the cigar industry, I don't know, send me a text, an email, show me the funds, <laughs> and we can talk. Guys, thank you very much again. My name is Yanko Maceda, founder of Tabanero Cigars, where we believe in the enjoyment of craftsmanship that allows you to stop time, lower your blood pressure, reflect on life, and plan the future ahead. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next Sunday.